Hi, and welcome to the problem session for lecture 8, covering the topic of discrete distributions. I want to begin here by discussing a question from the book that we don't provide an answer to in the, pro in the um, provided solutions, because there's so many possible answers. And the question is this, to write down a political process that you think might be drawn from the following discrete distributions, Bernoulli or binomial, Poisson or negative binomial. Now, one reason we don't provide an answer to that is there's so many possible answers that could fit here, don't want to um, have anyone focus on one particular answer as the right answer, because there are many of them. But in this problem session, it's useful to just talk about it a little bit. So I'll start with the binomial distribution, um, which can apply to things like coin flips and so on, but also can, and you know, die rolls, but can also, well, not die rolls, coin flips, um, but can also apply to something like repeated experiments. Say you had some, you assume there's some probability of having successful treatment in an experiment, you call that P, you run the experiment n times, and each treatment was independent of the previous one on different subjects. Well, then you'd expect that um, the number of times the treatment was successful would be distributed according to binomial distribution, and therefore, if your particular value of successful treatments didn't lie in a reasonable range of expectation, then you might believe that you had the wrong expectation for how well the treatment was going to work. Um, Poisson distributions are count distributions, they count events where you don't necessarily observe the non-events. So for instance, you can count traffic accidents without counting every single car that goes through an intersection. Um, these combine lots of things besides traffic accidents though, wars or vetoes, say presidential vetoes where you might have a certain underlying mechanism that produces X mu number of vetoes per month or year or whatever. And the Poisson distribution can then capture the distribution of these counts, such that if you pick any particular month or year, you would get a different number. Um, but all those numbers for counts would be drawn from this Poisson distribution. And if you got a number way out of whack from the distribution, then you might think something is different than you expect it to be. So you expect, so maybe your number didn't come from the Poisson distribution you thought it had come from. So maybe there's a different mean. But you can't just assume that because one month had a lot of accidents that you actually have some different process, you might just have drawn a large number once from the distribution. Okay. So those are some um, ways you can um, think about this in some physical science. And you can use these things as well to compute different stuff. So one thing to compute is the probability that any event happens. So let's consider a Poisson distribution and say, let's say there's a mean number of vetoes any given month is 2. So let's call them u2. And let's say that we want to know the probability that uh, it would be one veto in a given month, given that the mean is 2. Well, to figure this out, we can use the Poisson distribution. We can just plug into the distribution there. The distribution um, in general is mu to the v here divided by e to the mu times v factorial. Well, if you look at this thing, um, if you plug in over here, you get 2. In the bottom, you get e squared times 1 factorial is 1, so it's 2 over e squared, which is 0.27 or so. So you can use the distributions to tell you the chance that something might happen, assuming it's distributed according to the distribution, right? Assuming this thing is distributed according to the Poisson distribution. You can also use this stuff to find expectations for a particular random variable. So for instance, let's say I had a binomial distribution, and I wanted to know how many successes should I expect to see in n attempts. What I'm doing there is computing the expected value. Now remember, in general, the expected value of a variable in a discrete distribution looks like this. Um, the sum over all values of that variable that it could take times the variable times the PDF, sorry, the probability mass, the PMF, probability mass function for that variable. Okay. So this is in general. How about for the binomial distribution? Well, let's say we have k successes. We want to see how many successes we should expect to see. Well, you could have from 0 to n successes. Um, this is the thing we're trying to take the expected value of, so we put that in front. The binomial PMF is n choose 2, p to the k, 1 minus p to the n minus k. What can we do with this? Well, we can manipulate it a little bit and see what happens. First note, when k is 0, this whole thing is 0. So we can immediately strike out the one, 0 and put a 1 here. I'm just going to put that over it without writing it over again. That's the same thing. Now what can we do? Well, we can pull out an n. Now how do you see that? Look over here on the right in blue. If you have k times n choose k, 
that's k n factorial over n minus k factorial times k factorial, right? Well, k over k factorial is 1 over k minus 1 factorial. Because remember, k factorial is k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 and so on. So you divide top and bottom by k to get rid of that one, and you're left with k, factorial, k minus 1 factorial on the bottom. Further, you can pull an n out of the top to get n times n minus 1 factorial. Finally, so there's an n here. Finally, you can take the bottom without doing anything at all and turn it into n minus 1 minus k minus 1 factorial. Because here, n minus 1 minus k minus 1 is just n minus k. Um, it's k minus 1 factorial. And therefore, this whole thing equals n times n minus 1 choose k minus 1. So now we can go back here and do that. And we get the sum. So n goes out front because it's a constant. The sum from k equals 1 to n of um, n minus 1 choose k minus 1 times p to the k. 1 minus p to the n minus k. Now I can pull a p out and do the same thing, n times p. k goes 1 to n, n minus 1, k minus 1. Here's p to the k minus 1, and 1 minus p to the n minus 1 minus k minus 1 again, same logic as before, n minus 1 minus k minus 1 is n minus k. Um, now I can make r equal to k minus 1, and this becomes np, so if r equals 0 to n minus 1, of n minus 1 choose r, p to the r, 1 minus p to the n minus 1 minus r. Now, this thing over here in brackets, in left bracket here, is exactly equal to the binomial expansion of p plus 1 minus p to the n minus 1, but since p plus 1 minus p is 1, this whole thing is 1. So this equals np. So the expected number of successes in a binomial distribution is equal to np, which makes a lot of sense. If they're independent um, experiments, effectively, each p, each one has a chance of p success. You do n of them, the total number of successes you expect is n times p. So that's that. Um, that's one use. Another use could be for expected utility. Um, we can do that as well. With respect to utility, you can think of different games you could play. Now, later on we'll talk about this a little more in game theory, but here we'll do an example that's just decision theoretic in a game, in a sort of, not really game, but game of chicken. You have two players, they can advance or swerve. If you both advance, you get a negative five, and they just player one's payoffs here. Um, sorry, this is player one, this is player two. I don't know what I'm doing there. Um, not that it matters, they're symmetric. And player one gets a payoff of 20 if player one advances and player two swerves. So that gives you the best. So player, if you both advance, you crash, and that's bad. Um, so this is a game of chicken, so we both drive toward each other really fast, and whoever swerves first loses. Um, so here, if both drive toward each other fast, they crash, get a negative five. If you keep going and they swerve, you look like the big person there. You get 20. If you swerve and they keep going, you get zero. You're, you're embarrassed but safe. And if you both swerve, you get five, because no one's particularly embarrassed, and you don't get crashed. <laughs> so that's great. So that's the second best. Now, normally in game theory, you'd send payoffs to both players and then figure out what they should do in equilibrium. This game actually has two equilibria. Um, but here we're going to discuss instead a situation in which player one um, assigns probability of um, advancing equal to 0.7. So player one really believes that player two is going to advance with probability 0.7. So 70% of the time, player one believes player two will keep driving. What should player one do in that case? We can figure this out by computing expected utility for each action. Expected utility for advancing is the chance that player one advances. Sorry, player two advances. Times what you, what you get if you both advance together, that's AT, plus the chance they swerve times the probability that um, you advance alone. That's going to equal point, um, 0.7, point that working here, point 0.7 times your advance together, which is negative 5, plus point 0.3 times your advance alone, which is 20. 
that equals um, 2.5, right? That's negative 3.5 plus 6 is 2.5. Utility for swerving is a chance that player two advances, and your utility for swerving alone, plus the chance they swerve, times the utility for swerving together. At least we just use, not EUs, get rid of the EUs here, it's just base utilities. But no the utilities. Um, so this is 0 0.7 times 0, plus 0 0.3 times 5, equals 1.5, and because 2.5 is bigger than 1.5, you should advance. So you can use the same kind of technology of expected values in discrete distributions to figure out expected utilities in games that have discrete numbers of actions. So again, this is really going to be useful, and this, this is some examples for how you do it. And that's really it. That covers this, um, this topic. In the next problem session, we'll discuss continuous distributions. Thank you very much.